I do to get these things purred from my heart. You know, God began to take me, man, and the Bible calls it, well, the Bible calls it a sanctification. That's a cleansing, that's a washing, that's a taking away from all those things that's been bound up inside your life, inside your heart. You understand what I mean? Like when I used to cuss every day, every time I cuss word. And y'all know me, now you know I was always a political, but me and my yeah. homeboys, you know, what I mean? <laughs> we already know, you know, that, 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 it, it didn't take me nothing to curse. <coughs> my God. It didn't take me nothing to jump on you, bust in your mouth. <laughs> see, it ain't like I'm saying nothing that, that y'all ain't familiar for because, see, I'm so thankful to be able to say it and speak about these things today because, see, y'all know my background. But I'm telling you, man, when you begin to tap into true and living God, see, He's able to transform you. It don't happen on the outside, but something happens on the inside. See, the inside of the cup's been washed. I went like the Pharisees. See, the Pharisees, the outside of the cup. That's what they was always about, you know, getting the outside clean. But see, the sanctification got to come on the inside. And there ain't no sanctification take place unless you get into the true revelation, which is the Bible itself. See, man, I'm going to give you a few scriptures because, see, if you're ever going to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if you're ever going to consider Him as being the Lord and Savior, not just being somebody, oh, I'm saved, I'm a Christian, no, I mean, see, it breaks beyond that. See, uh, the real saved folk, the real Christian, begin to get in him and want to know something about him. See, you can't call and say, oh, well, uh, this is my president, but I don't know nothing about him. Or this is this is my friend right here, but I don't know nothing about him. See, what I'm, see, what I'm trying to say to you, though, you can't, man, if you're going to say that you're a Christian, you're going to say that Jesus is saved, you got to know something about him. Amen. You understand what I mean? And how else do you find something about him but, it, but, it, but the Bible itself? I read in the book one time that said that, if you're going to have a relationship with Jesus, you must first got to have a relationship with His Word. Because, see, if you look in this book right here, you go to John 1 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. If you roll over to John 1 14, it said, And the Word became flesh, blood among us, and the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So that thing goes hand in hand. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And then, and then you just look over a little bit in the passage, and it said the Word became flesh, dwelt among us as the only begotten of the Father. But then when you go to the book of Revelations, 19, 13, it said his vesture is dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. See, it don't get no more plainer than that. See, you don't have, it doesn't take a, a great rocket to scientist to say, oh my God, I mean, he must be the Word. See, that's why I begin to tap into the Spirit when I begin to see, you know, that, that that's where the relationship comes from. You understand? It's through His Word. I know that sometimes, you know what? I don't care what storm. I don't care what valley. I don't care what you go through. When you begin to get that Word and allow that thing to stir up inside of you, you understand? Because you begin what you do. You take both your feet. You stand on the solid rock. The Bible compares Jesus as being the rock. You begin to stand. When the bills come in, you ain't got no money. You don't know what to do. You begin to stand. You don't run from it. You face the problem head on. You understand? So many times in life, what happens when all this chaos comes in, we begin to fold a little bit. You understand? But what Jesus does, He builds a character of Him inside of our life. You understand what I mean? Instead of running from the problem, you begin to face it. You begin to face it head on. When I teach the guys, that's what I teach them. You don't run from the problem. You face the problem head on. I don't care what you got to do. Jesus was never a runner. Jesus came and died for you. He didn't run from the cross. He came and went willingly, gave his life for us. You face every problem. You don't think Jesus faced many problems? No. He faced many problems. So just by that in itself, we have to be the same way. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. So that's the character that we have to have. That's the character that's got to be performed in our life. We've got to stand in Jesus. We've got to stand on his word. No, that is where it's truth. I, I think, man, so many times I remember, I remember uh, a few times, yeah, I've wept, man, many times I have. I, I would not never lie to you. God knows I've wept. Knows many times I've wept, man, I have. Sitting in those minutes, it just seemed like, man, you know what, it's such a long time, it just seemed like it wasn't going to end. But I'm thankful with all my heart that I did all that time. Because without that time, I wouldn't have never got to know Him. I wouldn't have never got to the destiny that God's called me to get to. You understand what I mean? It took that. What the devil meant for bad, God turned around for the good. That's scripture. You know, the devil, he, he's literally out to steal, kill, and destroy. Yep. And that's, that's his mission. That's his job. God never did once put me in that penitentiary. 
I put myself in that penitentiary. I owned up to what I did. Yes, I was still facing issues. I'm still facing and dealing with that that side of the family, trying to get to see my daughter. But God's going to work at all that. You understand? Because see, I, I don't have no hatred. God rid me of all the hatred. You understand what I mean? I don't have nothing against those folks. I still love them. I don't care what they think about me, man. I don't care if they still think I'm the same person. I ha I do not have to live my life to them. I got one person I got to live my life to, and that's Jesus Christ Himself. That's the one I got to live my life to. And you know what? I came to that truth decision in my heart. And you know what? I did a study one time, and they said, uh, repentance is a decision that you make. It's a decision that you're going to turn around and you're going to go the other way. That's the best decision I've ever made in my life, to turn from that old life and go to a new life. How I forsake everybody? No, I have. I come and I, I, I get around everybody, and I still talk to them. I still love them. I don't look at nobody. I don't down nobody. Because if he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. I, I, I don't have no uh, a judgmental eye that I look and condemn you. You know what? God's going to work on you in his time. But he'll work on you that much quicker if you're going to yield to him. Amen. I really believe that. So I'm never here to condemn him. You know, I'm not a Pharisee. That's what the Pharisees do. I'm not, I don't live by the law. I live by grace and truth in Jesus Christ. You know, I just want to, I want to encourage, you know what, I want to encourage the salvation call. You know, I want to encourage, you know, if you don't, if you haven't, if you haven't gotten to know him. But if you know him, you still don't think that your relationship's right. And you still want to get to that next level, you still want to enter in. Don't be, listen, it don't take me leading you to the Lord. It take, listen, I didn't have nobody lead me to the Lord. I led myself right to the Lord because Jesus Christ began to tug at my heart. You understand what I mean? Something that came to my remembrance. You know, there's one that has never lived nor will ever forsake you. I remember walking out those dad first. I'm telling you, man, I remember like yesterday. You know what? I remember walking out those uh, gates. Yeah, man, it was, uh, it was I, I never just feel so much greater in my life. You know what? Because when I begin to walk, I begin to just tears begin to fall down my face. Like, like I mean, I could have filled a bucket. Because God spoke to me and said, Son, I told you I would never leave you, nor would I forsake you. He was with me from the beginning. He took me all the way out those prison walls, and he's still with me. He still has not left me. That's the God that I'm proclaiming. That's the God that I know. That's the God that will walk with you, even when things are coming in on you. You know, we find our, all of us find ourselves in society now, even in our family now. You understand? I know we have issues. I know that we have problems. But I'm telling you, man, God will give you a peace that passes all understanding. He'll make a way for you. You understand what I mean? But you know what? You got to you gotta willingly, you got to ask them to make that way for you. You can't, you know, I, 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 when, I, when, when I first got out of jail, I want to tell you the first thing that he really blessed me with. Because, you know, I, I learned the power of prayer because, I, you know, I did a lot of praying. I stayed on, I had calories. I still got calories on my knees. I stayed on so much. I stayed, man, I, I was getting people saved because they seen the way that I live in the penitentiary. They seen that I never did miss a time at night praying for hours, 45 minutes. Anytime we, I, I started a, a prayer service inside the place that I work, God began to move and said, you know, you pull up this, you write the word, you get a prayer circle for 30 minutes on the break time. I, man, God began to do that. People, I, I live a life in Christ Jesus. People begin to change. You understand what I mean? And I, I know right then, you know, God's got a, pur uh, 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 he's got a purpose for me to fulfill. You know, it, it's like a, I don't, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not getting caught up in myself. You understand what I mean? But I want to see others. Because, see, I understand that this is a real God, man. Yes. I understand that this is a real Jesus. It's just not somebody that's been talked about. Yes. You know, and, and man, we, we, you know, the life that we have, you know, it's just, if, you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. If he can come in, he can, he can make the ways change in the way that he did in my mind. He, 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 he turned my mind just in, in the opportunity, but he didn't turn it to down nobody, you understand? Mm -hmm. But he, 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 he's turned me to, to get to that destiny that he's called me to get to. But everybody has one. He don't just stop with me, but everybody's got one. So that's how good my God is. Man, you know, he don't show no partiality. He treats everybody the same. <laughs> even, with, even with the revelation, you understand what I mean? He's given us the authority to travel. Uh, the Bible says that He's given us the authority to travel over the surface of the storm. So we can walk in victory over that junk, no matter what He tells you, no matter what He brings into your mind. We have the power of the weak one. You know, if you're standing in the liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you stand in, if you're a believer of this word of God right here, you can walk in that power. I'm going to proclaim it today because I know it to be true. Because